Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. A new infrastructural planning tool to revolutionize infrastructure development on the island. The government of St. Lucia continues to monitor the global situation with the novel coronavirus. The first farmer's market of 2020 proves an all-round success. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Infrastructural planning on island will now have an increased focus on evidence-based decision-making, thanks to a pioneering software called the NIS-MOD, the National Infrastructural Systems Model. This infrastructural planning tool is a result of a technical assistance mission with the University of Oxford and the United Nations Office for Project Services, UNOPS. The National Integrated Planning and Program Unit, NIP, in the Department of Finance, has partnered with the University of Oxford and the United Nations Office for Project Services, UNOPS, in the development of infrastructural planning tools aimed at strengthening evidence-based decision-making for the island's infrastructural development. During a training workshop to orient stakeholders to the innovative software, NIP's director Howard Wells noted that the unveiling represented a culmination of over two years of intense planning and research. He noted that one of the direct benefits is the breaking down of silos, which will lead to increased information sharing to significantly improve infrastructural planning for St. Lucia. Essentially, those tools would now help us to best do analysis. Where are we right now in terms of our infrastructure, in terms of our planning? And again, as was stated before, it's evidence-based. So we're using evidence, evidence that exists in several areas, right, but compiling those using the software and to help us in making sound decisions, decisions that would help, for instance, in our budgetary um, planning in the future. Like many other developing countries, St. Lucia is confronted by economic, demographic and climate change challenges which must be navigated. Researcher with the University of Oxford, Daniel Adshead, stated that the university has put together a number of tools which can help government plan for adaptable, resilient infrastructure. The tool that we've developed is called NISMOD, um, the uh, uh, National uh, Infrastructure Systems Model, and it's an interdependent tool. So it brings together data uh, from a number of sectors, electricity, water, wastewater, solid waste, and it allows users then to decide how much of each of these types of infrastructures will be required on the, on the island of St. Lucia in the future, and uh, what kind of investments or policies or projects can be built or implemented to meet these needs in the future. Lena Fuldauer, researcher with the Oxford team, spearheaded the adaptation planning component of the National Infrastructure Assessment. This involved understanding the exposure of the national infrastructure to many different hazards. So we looked at a one meter sea level rise scenario, a four meter storm surge scenario, as well as flash flooding and landslides to understand where to spend adaptation resources on across different sectors. She added that St. Lucia stands to significantly benefit from the information generated through the modeling software by applying to global climate funders such as the Green Climate Fund and spending those resources on adapting to the impact of climate change. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. The government of St. Lucia continues to monitor the global situation with the novel coronavirus and implement proactive measures. The National Health Security Committee hosted a cross-sectoral consultation to discuss the government's approach to the importation of products from China. Here's Janelle Norvell. A meeting of the National Health Security Committee was held on February 7 at the Office of the Prime Minister in an ongoing effort to keep relevant stakeholders updated on the coronavirus. Matters for discussion included an update on global figures. As at February 9, 2020, there have been 37,558 confirmed cases globally, with 2,676 being new cases. China has confirmed a total of 37,251 cases and a total of 812 deaths. Meanwhile, there have been a total of 307 confirmed cases of coronavirus spanning across 24 countries with one death outside of China. Of concern in St. Lucia is the importation of meat and fish products from China. Ministry of Agriculture's Chief Veterinary Officer, Dr. Aurea King-Snack, explained that St. Lucia currently has no trade agreements with China regarding meat imports. 
Uh, presently, St. Lucia does not legally import any meat and meat products from China. We have a protocol in place where any country who is desirous of exporting meat and meat products to us would, would um, would contact the veterinary authority, risk assessments would be done. We're also guided by the World Animal Health Organization in terms of requirements that is to be put in place to facilitate the trade in animal and animal products. Presently, we do not have that relationship with China, so no meat and meat products are allowed or permitted to be imported into China, from China. Sorry. So um, I could say the public could be rest assured that um, meat products are not from China are not coming in legally. We do have the importation of fish though. Um, most of the fish coming in would come from a lot of the Asian countries which would include China. So we are in the process of evaluating the situation and see whether or not any restrictions can be placed. Officer in charge of enforcement at the Customs and Excise Department, Kosi Jean Frederick, confirmed that customs will continue to enforce current restrictions and inspection requirements on all meat imports into St. Lucia. All meats entering the country must be accompanied by an import license or what we would call a, a, a permit, um, a health permit, so to speak, to ensure that these meats are free and clear of all diseases. And in the absence of any of the, the mentioned require, um, documents, these, those meats would be detained for um, the agency, which is the veterinary division of the Ministry of Agriculture. Um, in light of the coronavirus, our vigilance would be increased and we will to ensure that um, meats on the whole are all screened and to ensure that there's nothing that would um, pass out us or rather enter our borders of the country because we definitely want to ensure that our people remain healthy and strong. The officer in charge of enforcement indicated that all meat being imported into the country has to be given the all clear by the Ministry of Agriculture. All meats are detained irrespective of whether or not they have the, doc the prerequisite document uh, because we actually carry out an agency function and we are not the authority as to whether or not a meat is, should be entered in. So yes, you may have the, the, the certificate, but there still may be something that would have escaped. So then the, the relevant authority, which is the Ministry of Agriculture, would have to sign off on that um, importation. While St. Lucia has not reported any cases of the coronavirus, the public is urged by the Department of Health and Wellness to practice the standard recommendations to prevent the spread of all viral infections, which include the frequent washing of hands with soap and water or using hand sanitizer where necessary. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Meantime, the management and staff of the tourism sector have been engaged by the Department of Health and Wellness on how the sector can collaborate in the response to the coronavirus. Health officials held a consultation session with key stakeholders of the tourism sector. More on this report from Fennel Neptune. The Department of Health and Wellness recently engaged key stakeholders in the hospitality industry in a discussion aimed at implementing a response plan for the coronavirus that will ensure the preservation of the tourism product. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glensford Joseph says, this dialogue is extremely important as measures will be put in place to ensure staff in the tourism sector are educated on ways to manage the threat of the coronavirus. Mechanisms were put in place whereby if the hotels our operators encounter someone who may be having signs and symptoms consistent with the novel coronavirus and especially having a history of travel, how they can best isolate those persons in a designated area and call the ministry for supportive care. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Donalyn Vitti, says her ministry remains committed to working with the Department of Health to ensure all procedures at the end seaports are followed in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Well, within the industry, we have accommodation properties, we have sites and attractions, we have the transportation sector with taxi drivers, we have the marine base 
um, businesses. So we're really looking at those persons who are essential to driving the businesses, whether it be on the management level or the operational level. But essentially, um, our hope is to work with all those who are essential to any business or any site and attraction, any tourism enterprise, who would be responsible for carrying out and surveillance to further assist um, the authorities, the, the health department, the security department, so that they can be charged with the information to act. Chief Executive Officer of the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association, Norani Aziz, spoke on the importance of educating stakeholders within the tourism sector on how to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus. We are comfortable that we have set up a, a decent plan of engagement that will include um, general meeting and information sharing, training of trainers who will hopefully roll out to provide more on-site engagement and, and development of our team members, and also to look at the various pieces of communicating communication literature that we can use to um, strengthen and enhance the transfer of those competencies. The Department of Health and Wellness remains committed to continue dialogue with stakeholders in the tourism sector including Ministry of Tourism, the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association, and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Phenel Neptune. Ground has broken on the southern headquarters for the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. The management of Wasco says the new premises in VA4 provides not only an improved workspace for staff, but will also improve service delivery to residents. The Water and Sewage Company, Wasco, established its Viewfront office in December 2002 to serve residents of the South from Denry to Miku. It was later established that the leased building could no longer effectively facilitate the increasing demands placed on Wasco's management and staff by its southern clientele. Government, acting on the advice of the chairman of the board of directors of Wasco, decided to construct the new office facility which is expected to accommodate the overall proposed development of the south of the island. Chairman of Wasco's Board of Directors, Francis Denbo, says it's a significant achievement for the company to own this new building. For some time now, we have been contemplating constructing our own office building in Viewfort. This is to provide a permanent location to effectively deliver our services to an increasing number of clients, as well as to provide adequate and comfortable space for our staff. Consequently, we approach our line minister, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, and Prime Minister Alan Chastney for a suitable location to construct this office building. Cabinet rapidly processed our request and kindly donated this parcel of land of just over one acre for this undertaking. Wasco wishes to thank the ministers of this government for their quick response and generous donation. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, is delighted to see the project come to fruition. And I'm happy to be part of a team that made a commitment a year and a half ago when I was addressing the staff of Wasco and I told them I'll be working with the board, with my government and management of Wasco to improve the facility in the South. And I'm happy today that we are delivering on that commitment. And I want to express my appreciation to the management and of course to my cabinet for assisting us in delivering on what I call a phase one. Phase one is the South, phase two will be castries. So definitely that is the intention. Mayor of the Viewfort South Constituency Council, Orisha Denbo Bolin, says the new building will bring more opportunities for residents of the South. We at the Viewfort South Constituency Council expect not only that the new building will accommodate the increased personnel which will be, which will be required to support the business growth in the South, but that the construction of this building will provide much needed employment opportunities, particularly for the residents of Wefort South. The 10,000 square foot two-story building will feature prominently at the entrance of the town of Wefort and is expected to be completed in less than 12 months. 
The project costs some $7.5 million with financing in part by Bank of St. Lucia. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment. The Ministry of Tourism is working alongside the Department of Statistics to develop St. Lucia's Tourism Satellite Account, TSA. The Tourism Satellite Account is an internationally established method of measuring the direct contributions of tourism to our national economy. This will help the government in developing effective policy for the industry. If you are in the business of tourism, the Ministry needs your help in collecting critical data necessary for this tourism satellite account. Let's all help to develop and improve our economy. All tourism-related establishments are asked to contact the Ministry at 468-5393 before Friday the 28th of February for further information specific to their business. Welcome back. The Taiwan Technical Mission, in conjunction with the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, recently hosted the first Farmers Market of 2020 in Denry at the Agricultural Extension Office, located opposite Valton's Hardware. Anissi Antoine has more on the successful venture. The main objective of the Farmers Market was to encourage the purchasing of local produce. The initiative forms part of the enhancement of the efficiency of production, distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetables sector project that focuses on seven crops over a three-year period. Aglin Yudovic is the project coordinator for the seven crop project. We know that farmers have the traditional markets, cashews markets, um, the different outlets and so on. So we're trying to explore non-traditional markets for the farmers, so closer in the communities where the schools could participate more. Today we have a different feature here. We have the school from Clinton Mason School. They um, they involved in the sample, they, pro they produce um, some dishes, so that would be the FNN classes. So they produce some dishes out of the crops. They feature in these crops this time, where persons could see how they can prepare it differently. I just sampled one of them, it's super delicious, you know? So we're looking at, at ways of, of preparation that will increase local consumption as well as the primary sales. Here we also have the nutritionist today with us, who's giving advice on how these crops can be used, the health benefits of, of, of these produce we're looking at, and you know, ways and means of, of in, incorporating more into the, the local diet. Mm -hmm. The farmer's market showcased three of the seven crops under the vegetable diversification project as well as other produce such as honey and local wines. Shen Pinyu of the Taiwanese Technical Mission noted that this is the fifth farmer's market being held in St. Lucia. So we try to reduce the import bill for Sen, uh, in St. Lucia uh, for, of the vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. So that's why we try to improve the production and the yield uh, for the farmers, for the seven crops, uh, for the seven crops, and except for besides helping them with the techniques, we also bring new technology like the hoop. Local farmers from the village of Denry expressed their satisfaction with the initiative. Yeah, I'm really happy of what happened because, mm -hmm. to tell the truth, I'm here right now to show that I'm a farmer mm -hmm. and I'm satisfied with what's happening right now. So far, as I can see there right now, it is a very, very, very good step because as I can see, I see people are coming and buying. Mm. People are just buying like that. It's just a market and people just buying stuff. And mm. to me, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that could continue. The enhancement of the efficiency of production, distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetables sector project commenced in 2019 and will culminate in 2021. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. St. Lucia! Are, are, are you ready for the National Independence Parade? Celebrate our independence in a grand way this February 22nd, starting at the Sab in VG. Come experience a true St. Lucian spectacle with amazing floats, traditional dancers, musicians, and more. Led by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and include communities, ministries, and business houses. Join in the excitement and let's 
show the best of St. Lucia. Now is the time. Let's do this together. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame Department of Responsibility with Formation and Government Service, GIS, as a Webby Television National via NTN, a Visito Nouvelle Arquion. Visito Primus Hutchinson. Les officiers médicaux qui qualifient en assistance technique ou en secours en temps accident, à ce pays les officiers pompiers qui sont sortis au lieu en pays, trouvent l'occasion pour renforcer capacité pour effectivement contrôler la maladie de corona en huit ici mais en pays cette ici. Ça a été fait par un atelier qui a été assisté récemment. Officier médical de santé, Dr. Glensford Joseph, dit que le département de santé n'a commitment et dédication pour faire assurer que ces officiers pompiers et qui ont procuré l'assistance technique de santé n'ont pas capacité pour prendre toute précaution qui est nécessaire si un cas de maladie de corona tombe à ce site ci Selon Dr. Joseph, le ministère de la Santé a collaboré avec toute agence qui est concernée et c'est pour raison pour exercer ça là. Docteur Joseph aussi renforcé pour un qui, quand nous tous connaissons, les années y ont couru venir pour assister aux monde qui tombe malade. Et puis aussi c'est y ont qui peut qu'à souffrir et puis problème d'aspiration de la fièvre. Alors des fois y ont même parce que c'est officier au courant et puis c'est pour question qui nécessaire ou aussi au courant et puis c'est signe qui a l'occasion de condition maladie ça là et à qui meilleure façon pour protéger quoi yo même la famille et nation coordinateur pour service des assistants médical technical en situation du coup ça c'est Irenius Henry déclare qui il est plein et puis entraînement ça là parce que ça a placé ses officiers dans leur position pour adresser n'importe possibilité maladie corona il ajoute qui ces participants m'a dit plusieurs questions, comme c'est yo qui a premier fait contact et puis moun qui tombe malade et qui a tué traitement et transportation pour yon facilité santé. Alors, si yon a une situation côté maladie, ça a commencé, si mais c'est yo qui premier devant et qui a un mauvais risque pour trouver affecté et qui a porté risque pour la famille et l'autre monde. Le département de santé a continué pour encourager cette question pour prendre toutes les précautions qui sont nécessaires pour protéger les coyotes contre les méchants maladies. En parlant de ça, le département de santé, en bas de la direction de l'Organisation de santé mondiale, la WHO, a continué pour indiquer le public la concernant les maladies de corona. Officier des affaires de communication en ministère de la santé, Ronald Neptune, a annoncé que le département a suivi tout le monde qui l'organisation a jamais été en place et qui a travaillé très sérieux pour faire assurer que cette lycée est bien préparé pour adresser la maladie. Si il a cas, il commence à affecter nous. Selon Neptune, le département a déjà suivi l'information sur l'établissement média PIA concernant ces diverses précautions qui peuvent payer à ni Le département de santé aussi qu'à travailler ensemble et puis l'autorité pour la main et le repos à cette place de la pour pour renforcer le service des affaires santé à ce et repos et le WAFLA. Nous aussi qu'à chaîne étonnement et puis travailler santé à ce et le repos. Nous aussi qu'à faire recommandations pour les gens à ce que les gens empêchent de jouer les malades. Nous avons demandé les gens pour assurer les malades. Yo lave la main yos, et puis savon, et puis glo, et bien service sanitaire si savon, et bien glo pa avelab. Yon aussi si pose kouve bouche, ek ne yo, et puis tichou, et bien had, le ka touse, et bien estene. Yon aussi si pose koupe asou, mizitan, et ka weste oliwa moun, qui ne signe de maladie, problème, l'espiration, qu'on tousse et estenie. Yon aussi, si pose visiteur docteur, et bay l'histoire place, et j'a voyage, et spécialement, si il ne signe de problème, l'espiration, de wa, 
et bien après, il voyage. Mes et mesdames, nous allons continuer pour présenter et puis le statement qui le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasse ne fait en délivrance à Dressly pour ouvrir l'année 2020. Mais aujourd'hui, nous allons poser attention à ce que le Premier ministre Chasse a déclaré que je ne pas ça ignorer la situation de 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 la peine de la situation de la la vie de la de violence. Il la que de la pas seulement la de la peine pour la famille, mais aussi c'est une situation côté société a Pédi Yon, qui peut déjà faire bonne contribution pour le développement. Premier ministre Chasne aussi, Veti Nation, et fait yon comprendre que nous passons à continuer pour examiner la situation de la sans faire yon grande réflexion à ce façon nous-mêmes à conduire la vie, nou, à conduire la fin, nou, la famille, nou, manière nous agir puis yon à l'autre, de façon à nous choisir pour servir pour résoudre la chicane, et encore plus toujours. Attitude nous pour faire assurer nous toujours trouver revanche. Premier ministre Chastney, qui a conseillé pour nous qu'on société, fait tout ça qui est possible pour se battre la situation pendant le gouvernement, qui a implémenté diverses manœuvres pour empêcher d'adresser et de jouer une solution au crime. Premier ministre a mentionné ces démarches que le gouvernement japonais, par exemple, assistance pour police pays pour trouver équipement. Voici parmi l'autre. Établissement caméra à cette web. Et présentement, l'année 95, avec l'année sala, plan c'est pour établir 625 caméras. En plus, sorti castri pour gozile. Premier ministre uh, l'a mentionné plus que 80 officiers neuf police. Opération Forensic Lab. 12 police pour concept Velcastri. Apporter les mois pour avoir des. Opération police marin, vivre en action encore. Renforcer le système de justice pays et puis plus magistrat et juge. Premier ministre Chasne déclare que, malgré la tenue est forte pour dévoiler le plan pour bâtir un établissement nouveau pour la police l'année passée, 4 même. Le travail continue pour bâtir un premier quartier l'année passée, en vie, placement, prison. Premier ministre a annoncé le plan pour adresser le crime. Et projet pour les jeunesses pour aider les hôtes de Chime Kwim. Il y a ajouté que l'année pile et fort à ce groupe comme jeunes hommes qui en risque, et spécialement les jeunes mamans et femmes en cette commune et établissement programme après l'école pour engager les étudiants contre la vie de la petite. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons fait nouvelle, mesdames et messieurs. Je vous remercie pour vous regarder, pour vous avoir une invitation, pour vous aider à considérer comme c'est la vie, et pour vous aider à Merci au Pil Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise. Fair and breezy, becoming cloudy at times with a few scattered showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will continue to generate moderate to brisk easterly winds and rough seas around the Eastern Caribbean region for the next couple of days. Low level clouds drifting along the easterly wind flow will cause occasional showers over the Eastern Caribbean islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 4.40 p.m. and will be low again at 11.01 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was high at 5.47 p.m. and will be low again at 12.28 a.m. The seas are locally rough with waves and swells 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.29 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.